And then I was like in the in the parking lot. <laughs> um, I'm just like, and I hear fireworks going off yeah. for New Year's. I'm like, looks like I'm celebrating New Year's in a van in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> and I was like, fuck yeah, this is hilarious. I busted out. I had a I had a tank of nitrous with me. I started right. hitting some some nitrous. I, I I'm like I'm doing some writing and stuff at one point. <laughs> At one point, I was like, I, I was, I'm listening to fireworks, and I and I chased a, a shot of uh, Woodworth Reserve with chocolate milk while doing nitrous, right. and I'm like, I'm really living my own life right now. Also, uh, we I started recording just a little bit ago, so you guys are okay. good. Um, yeah, so, so get there, to the funny antidote. There's, <laughs> let's go. There's, uh, there, there, there's an app, uh, Harvest Host, I've used a couple times, and you got, I almost used it r recently. It's just a little tricky. I, so I decided when I looked at RVs and stuff, I was like, gosh, I don't think I care about the bathroom and shower yeah. situation. I they think I would like rather yeah. just use like, like I, I, I had my very first truck stop shower today and I was like, this is a nice, this is a better shower than a lot of like the Airbnbs. Airbnbs are like awesome and I like them and I have an eye for which ones are actually going to be good, but they also have their own peculiar little quirky, the quirky things. People aren't putting you in the nicest part of their house. Yeah, or or they just built it just to be an Airbnb, and so you can. T there's just things. It's like, if this person ever just spent a week living in here, they would see all of these things that yeah. are wrong with it. Yeah, once you get used to used to it a little bit, like the I found I like the state park showers, like those kind of things, more way more than using the shower in my motorhome. That was that felt like a it felt useless and cramped. And yeah, like, and even if they have room in them. Then you got they fill your water tank really fast, so they're sort of annoying. They're not. They're not. I wouldn't count them as a. The outdoor showers on them were really cool. Yeah. I those, but yeah. yeah, I never. I've never done like the the truck stop shower. Is that a? I did it today for the first time. Is it ever. like a gym shower? Uh, no. It's like a. You have like a door code that you get. It was like seventeen dollars or something like huh. that. I was like, oh, I mean. It's uh, still a lot cheaper than a hotel or whatever, but it, like right. yesterday I went to a, a rock gym and it's like $22 to go climb and get some exercise and get a shower in and everything. Um, but yeah, so so Harvest Host is, so I, I get the van um, and I'm like, oh, I'll try camping a little bit. My, my girlfriend's with me, so we'll do like, we'll pick particular regions that we'll be in that, that we want to camp a little bit. And this harvest house is, is basically people will just have parking spots like on their farm or at their vineyard or something oh, okay. like that. And the, you're just like encouraged to like buy a bottle of wine from the vineyard or like play around a golf at the golf course or whatever. And then you can camp there for free. And it's like, it's just way better. Like I, one of them um, had this like adorable coffee shop and like creamery and stuff, and then uh, and then I went horseback riding, and then another one was like this sustainable like closed looped farm um, system, um, and I, I I paid the guy to like give me a tour. I almost signed up to milk a cow. I almost paid to. <laughs> to yeah. milk a cow because you know how much Instagram was that would that cost you i think it was like 20 bucks or something you like pay, that. that's funny they like they're like they're like a version of tom sawyer where they're paying you, you got you <laughs> paying them fun. to do the work for them yeah, like, yeah, can, yeah, yeah would yeah. you also like to weed the garden for 30 <laughs> bucks i'll let you weed my garden yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's like well i'm probably never gonna milk a cow again in my life i think i i think i pulled on an udder once when I was a child being given like a farm tour or something like that. So I was like, That's, hey, I'm, I'm I, do I, something like that. I love, like I love 
um, this is one of those things where I love the idea of this. I love yeah. that you're doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like, me too. like in my RV when I was like, oh, I'm going to go living in campgrounds and blah, blah, blah. And then I realized I'm not really a camper, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very I, I don't know. We'll see. So so my my girlfriend was with me um, all of the all of this time until the, she went to, she has a business in New York, um, but she's been with me for months. And so she just went back to New York for new years and, um, and she wants to have a place there and like join me a little more infrequently. Um, and in the van, it she really was other lifestyles. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, the van is is it's not suitable for two people to live in, and cool. so we were staying in Airbnbs, which is fine. And and uh, like I I stayed in this like weird like bunker recently. There there's an OMG filter on Airbnb that has all of these really cool like architectural the uh, you know this and that homes that are really stand out in our interest. I stayed in a grain mill recently, like a pimped nice. out grain mill in in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was. Are it, you keeping it, like a video blog of all this, or no? Or but any I sort should. Of, I know I like should. You're in doing the, like this isn't the, the thing year. that people do in life. Like this is so. Uh, that's so cool and unique. Like, I know. And do you I just do, every day wake like up doing... every week? You're like, this is an adventure, or are you dragging from city to city, and then you sort of make yourself do stuff when you're there, or how, is it a mixture of both? Like, what's the What's the pl you know? Plan? It depends on how hard the grind is road wise. Uh, I mean, uh, I so I produce. I book all my. I mean, I I have I have a team of people, but I am um, I don't um, you know I, I I don't I very I very infrequently work comedy clubs and stuff. I'd rather go to a city, do a one nighter that I market and everything myself. Right, I'm responsible for. I call the shots and bring my own audience and everything, and then leave and and doing. And and that's sustainable doing one nighters. I can I can reliably you know fill three hundred seats for one night in a in a given city, and and so it's just a matter of like how busy am I in a give it like right before Christmas, I was I had like uh, I don't know it was like seven nights in a row and three of those nights had two shows on a night and i have a i have a i have a live vj that does things remote like that puts um uh visuals and stuff behind me going along with everything that i'm saying so i can go off on whatever tangents and he'll improvise and put that like if is I this just, the show you were that I, I saw you here last time you were here i saw you at the idiot box doing Sort of the beginnings of that show where you have Timothy Leary introduce you. And yeah, you did I did it have the visuals with it? Uh, you did not yet. Yeah, yeah, it has were, the visuals. You now. were on your way to Area 15, and then you were. Yeah. I think this is where you were going to hook up with them and start developing the visuals. Yeah, I did I did all that, and okay. then we figured out how my VJ could do it remotely, um, oh. uh, so that I could take it on the road. And so, um, so yeah, so it's, it's basically if I'm gonna do a show with with driving to a new city and everything it's like a 12 hour day so i'm not you know You're looking working. for hikes and, right. and, and, so, and stuff like that but then i'll have like my january i kept really light because i was unsure of how the market would be after the holidays and so usually the first half of the year is a little slow my February, I decided I'm, I'm going to be going through Florida, and I decided I wanted a little time to like try camping and nice weather during the winter and right. see how that goes. I got stuck the opposite. I thought with our motorhome, we're like, oh, we'll book, you know, we'll book up north for summers, and then winters we'll be we'll go down south and we'll work our way sort of around the country that way and stuff. And yeah, it's you know. Especially then, I was middle act and blah blah blah. You take what you can get as work. And you, oh yeah, and no, so I, I ended up with the opposite schedules and driving just like a road comic. But instead, I was pulling my car with a thirty-two foot motorhome and yeah, uh, it was it was really cool. The whole experience was really cool. But like I said, I wish I would have sort of been able to like enjoy it more instead yeah. of being like it, it was a part of this is my fucking life driving a house around like 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I got all my decisions behind me. Yeah, all the time. I mean, and it's weird though because like when you're saying like for your van to have you wanted to have shelves so you could have more stuff, I'm starting to feel the opposite about my life. Where I I'm thinking of like leaving with like seven books. Yeah, and and a and my clothes, and then yeah, having a car, having my car, and then whatever. You just said you weren't a camper. Yeah, but I I <laughs> I wouldn't. I would. I would try to do like work three weeks oh, okay. and then yeah. stay in a Hilton for a week. And then all my bills would be whatever that is, $1,500 for the month. But yeah, yeah. I don't have cable. I don't have blah, blah, blah. I don't have anything. And I just have, and then I just work. Yeah, yeah. And be a comedian. I would go I don't, Holiday Inn Express, by the way. You go there? Uh, yeah. That's if I'm, if I'm not, so if I know I'm going to be in a place for a while or I know what my schedule is going to be like, I, prefer airbnb especially if it's more than one day because they they have these outrageous service and cleaning fees cleaning and fees, stuff like yeah. that so you kind of you kind of need to be staying somewhere more than one night but if i'm only going to be one night or if i like know hey probably after this show i'm going to start making my way to the next city so I, I don't have such a long drive that following day then I'll stay in a hotel and I usually wait till last minute and just drive till I'm tired and find Holiday Inn Express. Oh, yeah, is, yeah. When you're driving, yeah, I'll sleep where, at wherever. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the most reliable, affordable hotel that's like clean and nice. And they usually have like a hot tub and stuff like that, which I actually use. Right. Um, and uh, that's, that's, so, yeah. so, yeah, it's, but, but I say Hilton, but Holiday Express is fine. Right. Well, Hilton's <laughs> you know? are the problem with Hilton's is they won't like have refrigerators and stuff it's like uh it's like uncouth to have um amenities you know it's 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 it, fancy hotels are like we don't have practical Leftovers things here you need to yeah, yeah i would like i would like to for the week have like a little kitchenette you want a little know. kitchenette and stuff yeah. so there's uh, uh Express. expresso uh, there's another chain that has that have, what's the, oh, the, the some of those ex, and stuff? some of those extended stay ones can yeah. be really nice. They'll have a kitchen in them. Some of those can be really nice. Yeah, I I don't I don't need much. I mean, the reason why I wanted all the shelves for step one, I have a ton of merch, and two, um, I have uh, I have you know just like. Yeah, I went rock climbing yesterday. I went. I, I I go in streaks of. I'm into pickleball. I've kind of fallen out of it, but I just started playing again. Yeah. And just having enough stuff around to be able to, like, I have. I don't have them with me, but I have two inflatable stand-up paddle boards. They don't take up a lot of space, and. It'd be wonderful if I had, you know, a van and it was like, yeah. oh, I can like go on a, a paddleboard date and you know just have some stuff like that to like just to just to make everything a little more of an adventure just to have have a little more so i didn't actually ever think that i'd be sleeping in a van like have a van for like actually you're just driving you're in. driving your your life around with you yeah yeah pretty much and now i'm thinking i think this year i might actually you know the last couple of days it's the first time i've had it by myself and i'm like I like this. I'm like figuring out these little things of like how, where I want to put my clothes and arrange things yeah, and like yeah. solving the puzzle of it. And it's so much, I've never been a clean or organized person in that way. But when you have such you a have tiny, to be in the tiny space, <laughs> space, it's like helping me like understand the value of keeping things clean and organized. So I'm like, maybe, maybe this is my, my year to, I have a, I have like a 360 GoPro and some other like equipment stuff. I, I don't like selfies. I like to just like have my own <laughs> last night I was in, I stopped in, I stopped in a, a Walmart um, for a few things for the van. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this and that and start the new year with a couple of these tweaks that I wanted. And, and then I was like in the in the parking lot. <laughs> um, I'm just like, and I hear fireworks going off yeah. for New Year's. I'm like, it looks like I'm celebrating New Year's in a van in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> and I was like 
fuck yeah this is hilarious i busted out i had a i had a tank of nitrous with me i started right. hitting some some nitrous I, I i'm like i'm doing some writing and stuff at one point <laughs> at one point i was like I, I was i'm listening to fireworks and i and i chased a a shot of uh Woodworth Reserve with chocolate milk while doing <laughs> nitrous. Right. And I'm like, I'm really living my own life right now. I'm, I'm su- playing by my by I'm my surprised own. somebody from Walmart doesn't walk out and be like, they, they've been watching you on the video camera for like uh, 40 minutes. So, someone hearing the van go, yeah. <laughs> as I'm filling a balloon with, <laughs> with the whippets. So w- when you do... How 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 much nitrous do you do bef- before the voices in your head start talking high pitched or whatever like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's actually a low nitrous lowers your voice. It's the opposite okay. of helium. So yeah, the- you you got to do a little bit of oh, both that's- maybe. I was I was thought that that that's what I would I I would maybe I would I would show up um, to like a birthday party or something like that with a bunch of balloons with that, but I'd put a, a, a filled with nitrous, but not tell anyone. And what then does put nitrous a little, do? Like when I was thinking it was helium, what is it? What is it oh, nitrous is like, they give it to you at like a dental office. Oh, it's um, laughing gas. Yeah. Laughing gas. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what whippets were? Whippets yeah. Are? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Delightful. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's the sort of thing that you want if, if you're, um, if you're getting your teeth drilled or, or whatever, it's right. nice and, and relaxing. And, doesn't it, it last for like eight seconds? Yeah, but it's like a great eight seconds. And it sounds like a conversation like I had really with my fiance. Chill. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I um, man, I. I but I, I remember that. doing it when I did it. When I would do it, it's like it freaked me out a little bit because it felt like it was cool, but it felt like popping in my brain, like poppers. It felt like in my brain it was like, pop, 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 and then and and I always oh, found and I always found weed to be peculiar. that like, huh? <laughs> yeah, there will be some peculiar things <laughs> that'll yeah. happen if you do enough nitrous. It's not. It's it's just uh, it's it's a nice it's nice to have a tank of nitrous around to like bust out at a social gathering because no one knows what to do. Hey, wh- <laughs> what are we doing, yeah. especially like as adults and <laughs> stuff? Like, like, exactly. Suddenly we're just gonna huff balloons, like <laughs> what? And then you start doing it, and you're like, you know, this is a memorable evening. <laughs> <laughs> Great time every time. I, I have I have vitamin B12 supplements around, he so that he, he runs I don't into the Walmart, and they're like, are, "Dude, you got a lot. Are you a clown or something? Like, you make balloon animals?" He's like, "Nah, nah, nah." I'm a- that's how I brought it. That's how I brought in the New Year. It was <laughs> lovely. It was one of the finest New Years I've ever had. Actually, oh. I like New Years by myself. I I, I much prefer. Uh, I I usually give me your top like, three New Years. Um, Malibu, by myself, it, it, and every time there's like a, I, I think another condition is you have to be invited to a new year's function and go like you know what nah because you you can't you can't just like be alone oh, you have to choose a new, you have to choose to be alone you have to like choose it over another thing like i had like i could have been in raleigh hanging out with some people and some friends and stuff last night and i was like you know what no i'm, I'm having a night yeah. and i by, <laughs> by myself i just want to see what i'll what i'll get into Cause I know me and I know I like, could just get into like doing some weird shit to like make myself laugh. And that was great. It was great to bring in the new year, just like straightening up my van and then fixing up some, I mean, you saw my van. It's fucking adorable. It is adorable. It's you know what I, I, I got, I don't know. I'm surprised. I'm surprised by that. It's just white. Um, I somehow I, I've, feel like there should there would be the, art or weird outside? science written on it or some like yeah. some sort of decor that would be and, like ah look at this is, no i, this I is mean it, it's it's on my radar there's this there's this gallery um uh, called uh, a psychedelic art gallery called the chambers project in in nevada city um california and and um kind of doing some collaborative stuff with 
them. He just like puts a lot of different psychedelic artists together at various projects and stuff. And we're, right. we're planning a few different things um, together. A really interesting guy. And he has a, he has a project which he's having his, um, he, he's trying to have his top 20 um, favorite uh, psychedelic artists paint his top 20 favorite cars. So he has like this, this like Ferrari of this specific year that's being painted in this studio right now by, uh, okay. by this guy. And so I'm like, you know what? I think when I'm through there, I'm going to have, I'm going to have them line up someone to, to pimp out my, my, band, yeah. my sprinter. And so, yeah, then it'll just be a fucking fractal, <laughs> like hyperspace freight train yeah. just shooting down <laughs> the interstate. I mean, it worries me, you know, people like, you know, it's my home and stuff, like, but like people like know being able to easily identify That's true. my vehicle and That's my true. home and my belongings. It's, it makes me it makes me like probably unnecessarily paranoid, but I, bet I don't. In that van. Uh, well, so, I mean, yeah. there yeah, is yeah. there is something too. Like you have me think because my son his tags expired and we have the tag and I'm like put it on because yeah. that's an excuse for them to pull you over, not having your tag. He's, you know. Oh yeah. And. I go like my old I break for hallucinations bumper sticker. Like, you know, I used to have that on my car. I remember my dad being like, are you trying to get pulled over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I just think that's a funny thing to say. You yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, so your van would I be do, a, a I get sign into a little of, bit too much mischief to to draw too much attention to right. myself. <laughs> Stick I, with the nondescript I really white do. van. And I don't want that to ever change. You know, I'm 43 and I like it, more and more I have to like force myself to like you know, get into like ridiculous behavior and stuff. That's, that's just like, like, you know, I, I just, I, I want to, I want to once in a while be like, like, you know, that's what was so special about last night is like, it's the sort of situation where it looks like, you know, real like down and out type of <laughs> type to an, to, of behavior. To an outsider. Like, to an to an outsider. And to me, I'm like, this is fucking hilarious. I'm having the time of my life right now. I still have I woke up this morning feeling just absolutely wonderful about every decision that I made. That's great. And I'm like, you know, fucking chasing some fucking bourbon with chocolate milk. I never thought to do that before. It's the dumbest thing I've ever thought. And there's just like I just I just like I just like looking at myself sometimes and going like, who are you? Like what what is this about? And it's it like, dude, you know what I like about comedy? Making myself laugh. Like driving, yeah. thinking of the joke, making myself laugh. I love it. I could give a fuck about being on stage. Some people are like, oh, and the the laughter of the audience and that feeling and knowing that you oh, and, and bringing joy into people's lives. And for that moment, right. they get to forget about their problems because I I could give two shits uh. about <laughs> any of that, man. Uh. I, I, I like being by myself, having some fucking weird idea or getting into some weird trouble or something like that having a laugh about it and then being like, you know what? I, I guess I could like monetize that. If I write that down, turn that into a story, like people will pay me and then I can, and then I can keep on like doing my thing right, and right, making right. myself would you, laugh. Would, it, would you don't feel the need to, to go like, Oh, I can't wait to tell people that you've had, you got your fun by thinking it. No, and I, creating it. I, I right? wish I had more of any, I I'm, I'm starting to sense that urge for the first time since before COVID. So right before COVID in, in 2020, my new year's resolution was this year I'm, I'm committed. Cause I had this show stand up science I was touring with, which was like, uh, having local scientists, uh, each show, this I saw that uh, show yeah, too. Yeah, with yeah. The, you did it here, you did it here again. You yeah. did it with Dave Waite, and it was great. And yeah, it got a way better like turnout and response than like you. you stereotypically, you think crowds don't care about that. Like yeah, that's yeah. sort of what we've been told our whole careers. Like yeah, like you're too cerebral. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, don't you can't don't do those subjects. People in the Midwest don't get it, and. I feel like guys like me, you, Babbitt, like David Crow, like we're driving around the country being like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People people get this and love it. I think it's you know? I think it's a marketing thing. You know, I, I think that I think that 
you know, if if someone if I went and saw a headliner that did nothing but an hour of football jokes, I'd be like, "Hey, why don't you give me a heads up?" You know right. that that's <laughs> that that's going to be the case. Right. And then like I'll I'll pass it on it and and guess what? Good news for you. There's going to be a fuckload of football fans there that will enjoy all of your references and every and and that's wonderful that you've have that interest and have put that show together, but it just like you just can't do that in a comedy club. It needs to be so hyper accessible that it's like, you know, right. it, 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 it's just like you're kind of babysitting drunks and stuff like that. And it's so, you know, when I started doing indie things and producing my own shows and figuring that out, I would do a week at a club, you know, Thursday through Saturday or Sunday or whatever. Right. And then I'd be like, oh, I'll, I'll book this music venue on this Tuesday night and see how this goes. And those shows were just always my favorite ones. And they brought me a lot of joy. And so everything. they and the, you, you wouldn't. My impression is you weren't going like, OK, I developed this this show about science, this this and the science is the human eye. Mm -hmm. and then you that was your show for a year you would I do it on it. that for when that city or maybe two in that little area or whatever and then you'd pick a different subject and do a different show the next yeah that's fascinating it, it was pretty it was pretty dependent on who my guests are i'm gonna do a version that's more like what you're saying so i'll i'll write um like I'm, I'm working on my own book about cognitive biases uh, right now. You have this book here that's all about. I'm getting ready to those, read that book. Uh, so yes, those sorts of uh, those sorts of things. Daniel Kahneman was was one of the one of the like real founders of the of the field of cognitive biases, the kind of predictable systemic ways in which the human mind tends to err. Um, uh, or bias itself towards erring in one way or, or another. Once you kind of um, started to learn this stuff about that the mind works that way, does it translate to the your decision making or to mm -hmm. how you see other? Do you see it now, like around you in in real life? Like you notice? Oh yeah, they're makes life they're more irritating <laughs> to know, like <laughs> not not just. Uh, how wrong people are about things, but why they're wrong about those things. And uh, there's not a whole hell of a lot you're going to be able to do about like we evolved to be these social apes. And it's like we have these biases that make us uh, like there, there's there's a feeling that our brains that they're like, you know, we're really we're smart and our brains are about being smart and figuring things out. And so like what the brain is doing is is trying to approximate and model objective reality, reality that is true whether humans exist or not, whether uh, whether there's all humans go extinct, you know, the earth will still be revolving around the sun. Those are objective realities. And and so but we live in this world of subjective realities, our feelings, our, our perception of like, isn't it great that we are revolving around this star or, isn't it meaningless that we're th those are just those are subjective ideas that only exist because you exist there's a, their opinions essentially and right. and those drive most of our thinking and intuitively it feels like you know i just got to like as i keep living my brain will just keep on honing in on like this more accurate version of modeling objective reality and making better predictions and it's just like not what the brain's even for or about it's like much more about our social lives and attaining status and mating and those sorts of so is it because we get locked into that or because and and the and we if we were if we sort of trained our the way we think and see reality you know what i mean what can we could we change that i mean if we were raised thinking in a different way than we are raised i th i think sort of a matrixy kind of but i think to be mindful of these things and bringing awareness uh to them you know is is something that can be helpful like say um you know right now i'm uh, uh, kind of structuring some of this book uh, and and it's stuff that like these are Daniel Kahneman wrote a Nobel Prize uh, or is a Nobel Prize um, uh, winning 
uh, scientist who's writing this book about a similar subject that some dumb fuck comedian is writing while huffing nitrous and, <laughs> and drinking right. chocolate milk whiskey. And so, so I, I often experience imposter syndrome, you know, this idea that people are going to find out that like, you're, you're not as competent as, as you may at first appear or something like that. And, and, and you'll eventually kind of get, get called out. And, and, um, and I think that like knowing that that's a part of the human condition, um, helps so that I know like, Oh, everyone like researchers who spend their life studying imposter syndrome, I'm sure have days when they're like, Oh, who am I to study imposter syndrome? Right. You know, right. I, I don't think that that ever goes away. And, but like knowing that that exists, helps so that instead of like when I before I knew what imposter syndrome was I would experience it and not know not have like you know the words for it or know that it was part of the human condition to me it was just something that you know was uh, evoked this you know kind of negative emotion made me feel insecure made me feel like something wasn't worth attempting um, right. or doing and knowing that that is a thing that's just a regular part of who we are and understanding why why we uh, can have some of those biased perceptions um, that can always like go the other way too. Like Dunning-Kruger would be the, the other, the opposite bias of that, assuming that you know quite a bit more than, um, than you do. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, I think it's incredibly helpful to like, you know, be mindful of those those okay. things in overcoming them but what i was trying to articulate before is that is that like so a, a fun subject that i like thinking quite a bit about is is the evolution of self-deception so quite testably people um people um uh 70 of people think that they're um uh, in the um in the top half of drivers think they're in the top right. half of right. of uh, smartest people you know in intelligence and and uh, moral ethics or or what have you and, and those numbers don't add up and, <laughs> right. and and but there's 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 a lot of evolutionary reasons why a uh, organism uh like especially a a social animal um like humans would a, a trait that would make it over um uh, overconfident um helps in evolution uh, 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 could evolutionarily help it spread its genes it might take a little more chances it might end up getting more mates it, it might end right. up actually getting more reward because it's like well it's hard enough to get out of bed and take on the chaos of living uh, you know, imagine having to like really look at the, the reality yeah. of it um, every day. And, and of course, people go the other way and, and do, you know, think, you know, things are uh, like I, I tend to think things are futile. And all that, that's like my delusion tends to be more in in that vein. So there's like personality mine, mine differences. Do, mine does, too, a little bit. I, I, I'm just convinced that we're doing it all wrong. Oh yeah, and that this is we can't help but run into the laws of the universe, and it's really going to be painful for all of us. Uh, yeah, but I can't yeah. fathom how it'll be. I can't be like, where can I get in a van? Where's safe? Because my mind is like, nowhere is safe. The whole atmosphere is going to deteriorate, and we're not going to be able to breathe. And yeah, you know I mean? like I just. So I yeah. mean, even if everything was safe and good, would it be worth doing? I mean, it's like my my usually I I tend to I tend to um, uh, in my worst I tend to slide into a feeling of um of just helplessness of just like it's it wouldn't it wouldn't matter i could i could be like what are the top 10 things i want to improve in my life this year and i could accomplish all 10 of those things this year and far exceed my expectations for myself and i would still at the end of that find myself going like yeah but 
for what? Who cares? Like this, yeah. is, none of this shit matters. Like Jesus, look at see how low your expectations are. Those were easy to accomplish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the only reason you did it because you gave yourself easy shit to do. What's yeah, the matter yeah. You? you wasted a whole year not being better than this. <laughs> exactly. You know what I've been I've been doing recently, which I, I cause and I read it in a couple different ways, and it sort of clicked for me in another way. I read it, which was picture just thinking about death. Oh, and yeah. Like, not in a negative way, but like to overcome sort of lethargy or not doing something. Like I would never, I'm not going to be on my, I'm on my deathbed. I, I guarantee you one of the things I'm going to wish is that I would have meditated more so that this was easier right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think about that. Like, all right. I'm like, and so I've been sort of putting myself there. And, and before, as I'm doing stuff like this could be, this could be it. Think about this. Like this may be the last time you're doing this. Enjoy it. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about being grateful and it's like, it, it's starting to generate sort of a gratefulness in me yeah, yeah. for doing the things, everything that I'm doing. Yeah. And I like, when I first read, it, I was like, that's so morbid. Why would I want to think about death? Like, yeah, it's cause it's, it's such a negative and a fearful thing that you want to avoid. But it's um, somehow it's flipped in my head a little bit to be like, oh, I, that's helping me now yeah. to yeah. realize this may be my last breath. Well, your time's yeah. finite, so it's just like you can't be like, eh, I'll be grateful later. It's like, oh, I should be grateful now, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. I, but I've all my life I've been sort of like, I'll, I can do that then. I can yeah. do that then. You know? I don't know. It's it's been it's been helpful for me. But I don't know if that's another. I don't. Sometimes I don't know if I'm tricking myself and it. Like I, I'm trying to get to where I'm meditating and I'm like in a place of like stopping my mind. And it's like, well, I'm just, that's just my mind telling me that I'm stopping my mind. It's like, uh, yeah, I get a little like, meditation's tricky. I, I, I mean, it's a, first off life is, is certainly in, in my way of looking at it. It's certainly about at the end of the day, finding the placebo that works for you at some point you're going to need to go like, Sit in a van and have a uh, can of nitrous in the car. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, at, at some, some chocolate at, milk. At some point, you're gonna need to think of something that makes getting up makes this or that like worth doing or worth living. That that may not exactly be in some in perfect alignment with reality. You know, like right. you you uh, like the the way you know we we. we you know, we get primed by so many different things. Context is everything. The exact same meal when you're alone in a van or when you're at a fa fancy restaurant or when you're with friends or when you're on a date or, you know, it changes or, everything or, or, or about it, cha it. It changes everything about it that, you know, that exact same food prepared in the exact same way. And you so changed my life the way I'm going to see things from now on. Like, <laughs> like now when I see someone that I'm like, he's, you know, drinking vodka on the side of the road i'm not gonna see it as like oh <laughs> there but by the grace of god go i'm gonna be like that guy's living his dream right now i've actually been taking pretty good care of myself the, recently too and it was like i you know i went rock, rock climbing and stuff yesterday it was just yeah. like a, it was just like a hilarious like way to like I celebrate great, new Year's but, so like, but yeah of course like face value of like what this <laughs> what this behavior right and so and so i i think like with with meditation which i have I have some experience with. I don't do it as much as I, I should. I don't know. I go back and forth with meditation too, but it's but about it, altering your consciousness. So you're, that's sort of along the lines of, yeah, of, of, uh, tripping too, right? It's a, you're changing oh. your consciousness. Oh uh, yeah. It's all, all of it's a trip. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned gratitude. I mean, this is why like gratitude journals work is because you're basically giving your subconscious this assignment. If you're, if you're mm. keeping a gratitude journal and journaling at the end of every day, then there's a part of your subconscious that every day is like, ah, well, I know at the end of today, I'm going to have to write some bullshit so that I'm grateful my, for. And, and that will, and it, it yeah. will, it will change your focus <laughs> yeah. so that uh, much in the same way that you could name any color that you like and, you know, orange or something like that. And now I'm seeing like a little more orange and things or you mentioned right, 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 right. And uh, yeah, you can do that with gratitude or, or, uh, futility or, or, uh, or whatever else. It's so meditation's an interesting one because it's such a solo thing. And it's, I mean, we are such social animals because it's, 
it's it's harder to like no one i'm i'm not gonna no one's gonna come up to you like you you accomplish your meditation goals uh <laughs> you know you set for a month that you you're all all of january you're just meditate you're doing your best meditating self i think it's unlikely that if i see you again a month from now i'll be like tom have you been meditating yeah. like this is <laughs> You are a different You've got person. A and and so so we definitely I think that there is more humans have an easier time understanding like the more superficial type like, well, I can see if you have more muscles or right. something like that. And that doesn't necessarily increase uh, happiness for uh, everyone as much as say like meditation, but it's but it's it taps into you know how we advertise ourselves to peers and mates and attain status and you know stand up straight on stage and right. seem confident and every that that sort of thing is walk up is take just, the mic stand move it up to the side like, yeah move, yeah move it. That, that that sort of stuff is just like easier to notice and because of that you know we we care so much about what others think about us even when we don't think so um that like you know me meditation i i think is i i find that when i have my best moments in meditation i immediately pop out of it because i'll me i immediately go like oh i gotta tell someone about this yes. oh i have to write about it. oh i have to like yeah. you want to share that's great you know it's, it's cool that we get to share the, these rich life experiences but but it, it's it's such a uh incessant need of, the, of, of our brain to like share and advertise and kind of yeah. uh, build ourselves up or whatever that that it, i think it can get in the way of of something so that should you, really be for you and your your own personal wellness and development and yeah and, and but it state. has me thinking about what you were saying earlier about your when a joke when you get a joke now it's almost like where you think the joke and that's where you get some of your most joy right? yeah. is when that joke comes to you and you make yourself laugh and you're like and at that moment before you say all right i gotta write this down and turn it into a bit but yeah what? but you but you my feeling of when you were talking about it was you don't really think that why it's happening you're just enjoying it yeah almost med like meditation where you you're almost annoyed that i have to figure this out figure out a way to tell this to a crowd yeah so you've reached a point where it's like you it's with with the jokes, at least you're not thinking immediately. I got to tell somebody about this. I mean, definitely, you're definitely. Um, I I I see, um, you know, a vision because because stand up humor is a different thing than regular everyday humor or podcast humor, or conversational humor or whatever. Right. And so so it is the audience is an instrument is like a part of the instrument that you are playing so like certain stand-up jokes simply don't work without you know there being this amount of laughter in it this amount of like ooh, and then they get nervous here and then there's this release and 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 so in thinking of some of the things that make me laugh it is with uh, picturing myself on stage um delivering it and i do i what I like as a performer is when I'm able to uh, serve that vision well. Like I, I find that of, often the hardest thing is to um, resist letting an audience um, make me deviate because maybe things may, maybe aren't going as well or like a lot of times... I'm going back and forth with if I like monitors or not. I used to never like them, but sometimes like if I can't hear myself, I don't know if I'm like holding the yes. microphone close enough and I now exactly I don't know it. if I'm talking too loud and so I'm getting in my head about it. And and so to me And that breaks the connection to the bit and to the audience. Yeah. So so when when something goes the way that it was supposed to go in my head, or if I, you know, it's okay if I got to tweak something because something wasn't as funny or is more funny to me than it was to others, or some things are surprisingly more funny to others than they are to me. That that's all f fine and like, but but it's more it's more once 
once I have that rhythm of, of when I deliver it on stage exactly how I envisioned it, then it's just like, okay, I pictured that correctly. That's, that's something that right. seems to drive me is having been like, okay, that, that worked the way in the way that I thought, but it's, it definitely feels more like, um, more like doing math um to me oh, where you put the formula doing together like correctly right entertaining or like being being in the moment i don't feel like i'm in the moment that often on on stage um i'm usually thinking about the next joke or or how i'm, I'm like oh note that put that in right. next time ah these visuals i got to give him a note because i don't like the way that that landed with that timing oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. whole different visual uh, and now I'm playing off of it's a two person performance essentially, and I'm like playing off of visuals that he's sometimes that's not planned. So, yeah. So the, so last time you didn't when I saw you, you didn't you were doing the stories and you didn't necessarily have the visuals. You had a couple maybe I think that you started the show with, where Timothy Leary introduced you. And yeah. You had and then you were you were sort of you were then you you started booking stuff and you were working your way across the country to yeah. Vegas to do yeah, yeah. the show there. And then you hooked. Is that where you hooked up with the visual artist? And then you started. Oh no, I I I, I had him. We we were working on this idea for like a year and a half. Okay, so then that yeah. was sort of the culm- putting it together for the sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were waiting for this room in Vegas to open. They the this Area Fifteen this place that was built. But there was like one room in particular that we were going to start, and they were like kind of building it with the. Right. Um, uh, you know show in mind a little bit too and um, was that was that a lot of fun doing it every night in one's place and and it was challenging it was challenging um to market there wasn't you know it was really really hard to get crowds out i reliably right like the way that i market things and do things i usually have you know like a month or two Vegas crowds. It's like so how night? do you how do you get someone's attention who just landed there that day has no idea of that show and they're going to like they have like a bucket list of things that they want to do already and how do you like not only get their attention um, and right. for but then get them to the show and every it was it was so damn hard to do to do that but every everything else about it was a lot of fun and the whole. The whole reason for Vegas was because I didn't understand how I could do it. If it wasn't in the same place every every day, I didn't understand how I could do the show until I started doing it. And then you and learned then I was how to like, do it. Oh, and we just figured out some like things. You know, essentially, my VJ is like essentially using something very much like Twitch to to send video to a projector he's listening to me usually like over zoom or something like that and um and and watching and providing visuals from home and we so once in a he while had, have a so he has issue. like let's say let's say he's sitting he's sitting at home with his with the sort of database of visuals right and yeah. then he's lot watching your show and probably he knows 80% of what he's going to put on because this is what probably a little more than that, even more than that. But it's impressive when like, but I do go off on tangents on every show. Right. Or you do things in different orders than the way you do it every night or yeah, different orders. So he's sort of, he's sort of live DJing and grabbing that piece and putting it with here. Yeah. But he knows if you say, Dude, I fucking parked at a Walmart. He knows that chunk is coming. We have sequenced things that we've had like animators make for us and so oh, and awesome. various other artists. That's and so, so cool. yeah, and, and and so there there's definitely seen and so so he'll take so basically he has like say I'm talking about mushroom or say I'm talking about like L S D, for example. I have a a section about like the discovery of L S D. So it's about Elber Hoffman. So I'll 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 have so he'll have like some LSD esque um, like kind of just kind of um, subtle like background stuff happening, and then he's layering on top of that um, you know animations that we've built that are part of the story um, or things that he's 
uh, he does some AI stuff that he's blended in and, um, or, you know, some stock footage of, of this or that, that he, that he might play. And so there's always, there's always something related on the screen and then it's just like seamless. So if I skip around the background's still just like, I like it, you know, that kind of visual, but then he can pop on whatever and then change the background. Oh, and it's it, funny. I've always sort of thought that that'd be a really, not just for a psychedelic show, but like just for a comedy show to in the background, have that kind of stuff that sort of, on another level reinforced even subconsciously like what was coming what yeah. you were talking about giving them visuals like like we were talking earlier about when you write a joke sometimes you, you think visual and then it's about finding the words for it yeah get that, yeah, get yeah. that emotion or that feeling across and to have that stuff also on the screen and so it's like it's it so just adds fun. a depth probably to the show that yeah you know? so he he's been he's been he's got to be one of the uh, one of the like most veteran VJs out there because he started doing it like 20 years ago or so. Oh, wow. um, right. VJ stuff started taking off more about like 10 years ago. And so he's been working with all these different psychedelic groups and stuff and and um, doing, um, the, you know, all, all sorts of things like that. So, so he's, he's been creating things for references and songs and stuff like that for a long time. So he has on his computer just like a catalog of everything he's made in 20 years. So if oh, okay. I like, if I just start talking about elephants for some reason, like within 10 to 30 seconds, he'll, pull he'll up have elephants, like huh? some elephant art going on that's oh, like that's cool. related to, and it's usually custom stuff that he's made over you know over the years and so yeah it's really it's really intra and then it's like uh, you know and then there's like improvised th like you know there he one of the last shows he was like um like I, I started talking about um like uh how like every baby is tripping or whatever like all <laughs> of this is a trip like look at any baby they're tripping they're balls you just kind of get used to the experience and then you just forget that it's all a trip and um man you know it's a point that i believe but um but anyway he had these he had these like little animated like toddlers like making their way across the screen and and i like note it so usually there's a monitor in front of, so i can see what's being played behind me too but once in a while there's not and uh and so it'll be like a laugh at a part that's like wait that wasn't that wasn't me. I can tell they're like laughing at something on the yeah. on the screen. So I turn around uh, and so I'm like, oh, they like the baby. Uh, let's uh, hit them with a couple more babies, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm like more. And then and then and then suddenly uh, there's just like what he did was he took all of these things they put to, and then he just started layering it. And so so then there's just like ten thousand babies, like babies. Fr fractal like babies <laughs> uh, on on the screen, and and I'm like. There you go. There's uh, some video from the inside of my testicles, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it just like you know, just like an improvised thing that just it, it kind of uh, yeah. popped into my head. And yeah, it was it like the strongest thing in the world? Like, will we like do that as a bit? I don't know, but it'll be like a uh, you know, there, there's a little bit of improvised <laughs> elements in, in in every show like that, and and it's. And it's built out for uh, where I, I'm hoping to record the special this fall um, at Meow Wolf in Denver, which is a psychedelic, immersive psychedelic art space um, that's related to the Area 15 um, place. Right. And and they have they have the four wall um, projection mapping, so it's a 360 degree experience, and we have it all built out for that so that's that's, that's cool. what we're putting together now to be filmed this fall so that'll be that'll be um you know i think kind of the first of its kind and it's, it's so much fun to get to do we considered maybe doing it in a dome because like the sphere in vegas is popular right. now and everything but people uh, you know stuff becomes old news so fast that in the amount of time that it takes to like put the special together and everything else to so like maybe maybe no one gives a shit about that sphere anymore is there anybody in 
in your sphere comedically? What's doing what what you're doing and and toward or marketing towards a similar audience that you're sort of going for? I think or that did you find a unique space that's like, oh, I love this and nobody's doing it. I think that probably what I'm doing that's different than a lot of comedians is I have, you know, like you, you go to a comedy club and people don't know you, but it's like, oh, look, they have some TV credits. OK, you know, right. probably uh, let's check it out. You know, maybe they watch a little clip. OK, let's see. Yeah, yeah. what the hell? We'll, we'll check it out. You know, that that's like the general general like comedy club experience. Right. And so I'm kind of doing that similar thing with a theme, which is like a lot of people that come to my show probably didn't know who I was. I you know, I have there's people that know me from having been on big comedy podcasts or right and or like or and like people that do people still come see you from your comedy central specials and your 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 straight yeah that, specials that happens then... it's just like not the majority of the audience and right. so and it's great too because i make a lot of fans a lot of people like you know you've got a pretty wide spectrum see I would it think. advertised or whatever and then they look into what i do and they go like oh he has a science podcast and a documentary and stuff and so so people find me um that way and so that you know i have like i have a team of people that i've I, I, well, I started. I started last year just doing it by myself. I kind of lost everything over COVID. Um, right. But I, I had, I had a including couple your people, mind, right? Little, including your little... my mind, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I took on, I took on um, someone um, a little more full time who I'd worked with a little bit here and there, and was just starting to work with them a little bit more before COVID. So it was us two doing everything, and then I added, um, um, and then I added, uh, and then I eventually, because all the the hard thing this year has been about finding venues that have my tech needs because of the new demand. So like, a lot of these wonderful relationships that I built over twenty years, like they don't have the tech capabilities um, to for for my show, or it's just like not the right setup. Or I have different seating needs than oh, I okay. than I used to. I still do some clubs, but it's also just like not quite the the right um, the right vibe necessarily. Um, like I, I was just in uh, where was I in Louisville at this like really cool artsy alternative the portal. I think it was called in That's Louisville. A cool name for a room. Yeah, and it's like it's like just beautiful, like kind of trippy art everywhere, and you know more music venue and and stuff, but also right. like really you know not like a divey indie place, like really you know classy, awesome, but alternative uh, space. And that's I would say that's like the archetype of of the sort of room that I'm that I'm looking for. So so I ended up taking on um, like someone that's kind of like a, uh, a, a agent manager type person. And they're they're very good. Um, I mean, I learned how to do all that stuff years ago. And so I'm like still kind of a little bit better at it than um, but and then and then I you know I have like a web design and graphic designer that I work with pretty regularly and then I have a whole uh, so you're building a business I which is a, you I have a whole other yeah I have a lot of stuff going did on. I see you on uh, did I see a clip of you on on uh, Theo Vaughn's podcast where did you do one with Theo oh that I did years ago what happened was I was given a social person a uh, shot and um, and they just went back through some old clips to try to make some reels for highlight because I don't use social media that often. I, I feel like I've started to see clips of you more and more on I've been, TikTok. I've stuff. been I've been trying I've been trying to get on there. Um, yeah. And so, um, oh yeah, TikTok. I forgot about TikTok. I gotta I gotta start posting my all my reels on there. Um, but yeah, I I usually usually in terms of like organic content on on social media, I'll post something like maybe once a week. It's yeah. usually promoting my, I just don't like it that much. And it's like, you know, I actually, well, I actually I forgot about your podcast during, uh, 
during COVID. That was so good. Like that was so good. Like, yeah, you were mind doing- under matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I put both my podcasts on hiatus to build this show. Here we are, the science podcast. I'm starting up again um, now this year. So you that's really do a good. lot of great stuff. <laughs> I really, I, no, I really, I mean that. Like that's. Uh, and thanks, you, appreciate and it. And it's not it. It and it's not like in. I feel like I do a lot of stuff in like a flailing way, where blah blah blah. But you just—it feels like you, you, you do quality all the time, no matter what you're doing. You're doing straight stand up. You're doing the science thing. It's like, it. I don't know, man. It feels like it la- raises the level of the people around you as opposed to sort of settling into the level that everybody's at. It's it's admirable. Yeah, I, I mean, I try, but the you know like. The, the social stuff, because I actually, I, I enjoy going on Instagram and I actually like, there's like a lot of people on there that I follow that I regularly like right. get a good laugh from and, and everything. And, and I, I have a respect for that as an art form. It's just not an art form <laughs> that I, that you that feel I like chasing care really. about. Yeah. It's a, I wish I was the type of person that liked to take, uh, maybe I don't wish that, but I'm just not the type of person that likes selfies and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so same. like sometimes I'm out having my little adventures and be like, you know, I should be documenting this. And then, when you're talking about like just as you're driving around the country and staying in these crazy places, like they're not crazy places. They're like things I haven't heard of. Like, yeah, every one of them. I'm like, that's a cool experience. That's a cool experience. That's like, oh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like a, it's a I try to do that regularly. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you have plans for when you're in Florida this winter to do stuff like specifically around Florida? Or do you just sort of yeah. where you end up, you sort of start googling and be like oh, i'll go try this or yeah i i can only plan so far ahead like in florida yeah i mean i have a few friends sprinkled around that i want to visit and then i'm gonna see if there's i would love to see if i can find some beaches that i can i think you'll be good out. in florida finding some uh, t- uh but i don't i don't know what the rules are with i'm still learning the like you know camping in a van type thing and when yeah when people come and get a knock on uh, you know knock on your door while you're in your middle of a whip it yeah (laughs) 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 you should uh, always open the van with like 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 halloween candy (laughs) (laughs) oh you wanted candy yeah you know whatever it's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, I'm yeah, we'll see. I'm 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 just uh it's a little bit like mood dependent. So so I mean the the main thing is if I can have more movement in my life, it's all it's the hardest thing for me to like keep as a regular routine. It's the thing that implements me or or that that makes the biggest uh positive difference when I implement it and when I don't when I'm just like sitting around too much and stuff it's it's when i'm the most susceptible to like serious bouts of depression and so yeah i'm, I'm hoping to move more. there's a lot of great marine bi- biologists in florida so I'm probably hoping to get a few interviews i'm working on this what do you kind of want to know from the like what do you want to know from them about is like what's going on oh i i actually what i like about here we are is like i don't know like i don't have a plan like my the whole the whole premise of the show at least in my mind when i started it was i'm just like i'm I'm gonna just approach this like it's like kind of like a micro dirty job style of academia so like i don't care about getting I, I have reached out to Daniel Kahneman he's kind of retired from public speaking and unless it's uh you know someone that has more followers than <laughs> that, right, right, right. Uh, than me but but like I I don't um and I'm I'm relaunching with my favorite scientist Robert Sapolsky who has a new book called Determined but generally speaking I never seek out like ooh this new science book is out or whatever generally it's just I'm touring. I, I, I want it to be like part of the journey. So and I want it to be kind of random. So I look up a university or like an aquarium or zoo or something like that. Right. And I'll be like, I'll, I'll look through some of the researchers and be like, huh, I animal acupuncture. Like what? What's that about? And then like 
go and I get to see like a behind the scenes tour of a zoo and find out that like the animals are in zoos are so like both valuable and uh, and uh, cared for so well that they that they live way longer than oh, they're really? supposed to so they need to like give them a, uh, their spines start m most oh, mammals their okay. spines will start fusing together because they're not supposed to be anywhere near as old as they're able to keep we've them extended in, their in, life expectancy uh, by treating them really well traumatically so does do, do they ever use that as an argument to like the the animal or rights something activists, like that. yeah, that are like, well, you got to release them into the wild. We're like, no, they got it made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's like a interesting bit of psychology of, of like, uh, you know, I love animals, uh, animal documentaries, and like the David Attenborough stuff. It's why I have a science podcast. It's the thing that I would prefer to enjoy. I, I love, love, love wildlife. It's a, a, like evolutionary right. biology and stuff is my my favorite subject. Um, I, I like being around animals. I think that there are aspects of, you know, a lot of people that are into animal rights are like, oftentimes it's like, like farmers, um, you know, what, what farmers do might seem like cruel or something like that because it's in, in factory farming is of course like a horrific nightmare, but, but like an actual you know the old McDonald that doesn't exist anymore. Like right. th those farmers, like they they actually have a really good idea of what an animal's mind is like and going through in their personalities. Like most animal rights, because they're interacting with them. Yeah, most animal rights people are like you know probably from a big city, probably like have their ideas about what animals are like from watching cartoons as children you know they got their idea from disney movies right. and so like of course like who would want poor like minnie mouse being is in a, a rat trap or what you know uh but that's you know it's it's not really reality and and zoos are zoos are um you know uh Mostly filled with people who love animals, right? Why oh, would you have that yeah. job if you didn't? I mean, I went into a zoo in Lincoln, and it was like, it, I come, it was like this person working this desk. It's like they're there every day, talking with the, you know, however many people every day, and and they're just like, you have to go and see the baby elephants. Oh my God, the baby uh, elephants! You know, they're just they still uh, they're more excitement. excited than I am, and they're there every single day. Right. And um, and that's been my experience. Like, if you saw the kitchens in zoos, that they like, there's like master chefs and stuff like whipping up because because having variety in the diet and everything, and like figuring out how to like get deliver all the nutrition in the way, but that that's also like not the same thing and getting boring to some of these animals that like need a little more stimulation <laughs> really? and the animals are like i'm tired of mexican yeah 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 absolutely you know <laughs> it's how it's Extensive how power. taste and perception works i mean we are we are animals so and do do animals in the like do the do do lions and stuff do they get they get tired of antelope and they're like we i want I want. This, I think I want there's a lot going on there when you have, when you have have to hunt, and then you, and like sometimes if you're the lion, you get the liver. You want to go for the liver for, first, packed full of nutrients. Oh, if, okay. you, if you get if you get that, yeah, yeah, because you you don't you don't know or when you're a hyena, or, or rather you you you're gonna want to go before the lions show up and chase you off of the kill that you made. People think hyenas are scavengers and lions are doing it. No, no, no. It's the opposite. It's, uh, lions chase them off and then hyenas are uh, get the leftovers of the meal that they killed. Hey. <laughs> and, uh, but, but um, you know, so, so there's like choice selections and stuff like that um, and uh, uh, getting into hedonic treadmill. So the, the point is with, 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 uh, with zoos, is is that it, most most of the animals that you see like highlighted in a zoo are are facing extinction like will probably go extinct and like m most uh, a good part of your ticket it, not not only is that animal so well cared for that it's going to live longer than it ever would in the wild um 
not that it might not like being out in nature or not, might not like its ex existence in captivity sure but but it's also like part of your ticket is is going zoos are zoos are generally um the biggest source of funding for um for a lot of the organizations that are that, that are trying to like po uh, you know <laughs> stop poaching and that sort of thing you know what i mean like old folks home yeah we should start we make should them glass make and them glass and we go <laughs> in no and one view. wants to watch that we can though. extend their lives <laughs> <That's us>. <laughs> <laughs> change up their it's oh my gosh they, they'd be I, well, I, more I've been well to taken some care nursing of? homes oh man i was just back in wisconsin visiting my grandpa in nursing home I'm not a fan of nursing homes. Not fun, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not interested in extending that experience in myself. Uh, certainly. Who knows? Maybe when you get there, you go like, "This is a. This is interesting. That like my my that knees my mother are always in awful pain, and like I'm shitting myself. But there's still like some things that I'm appreciating. <laughs> oh, or is it just like day tomorrow? It'll be good. Pure misery. It's hard to make that gratitude list. Huh? I, I, <laughs> I think <laughs> that I think that every day gets a little worse in, in some cases, and that's I can't imagine a greater f source of suffering. Oh. If you if you uh, my gratitude list is at least it's not tomorrow yet. Yeah, the the and the the way that like the the way that like the brain recognizes and the reward system and everything and and the way that it habituates it through learning is it's like you you would. It, you would want to have small incremental gains in in life are are generally going to be better for your psychology than getting like one big win and like peaking there you know or or getting too accustomed to like having like just the best year of your life and then it just kind of like slowly declines after that you you want small incremental gains um in terms of happiness and then in terms of suffering you want to you want to rip the band-aid a little like like if, if, you know you you would you would rather and no one wants to break both of their feet but you would rather break both of your feet have that be a horrific amount of pain and then and then slowly just continue to get one first get used to it and then slowly get like better and better or Instead better you just at navigating worse and worse. rather than it just every day your feet just like are getting a little worse and worse until it's like they're broken yeah you would, and then that makes you fall down and break your knee uh, yeah, and then you're yeah. Like your knee starts to doesn't kind starts to heal a little bit and then because you've been walking weird now your hips fucked up and yeah it's like you slowly every body part just deteriorates day after day yeah and then uh, and then wow. there's intermittent rewards too which is you got to like change things up a little bit so so once in a while like you can't just have the routine all the time you gotta you gotta get a little wacky out there and surprise yourself what's the science that like, excites you the most the brain the brain stuff and psychology right now um i, I mean i have a I have a, you know, I, I, I've been sitting on, I've been wanting to write a, a book about cognitive biases for some time and have, usually when I write, it's just endless tangents and stuff and it's never organized. And, um, and I, I finally recently had like some of the structure and outline coming to me more clearly. So right. it's like finally pieced together that way. I have endless things to say about the subject, but like picking what's the important part and how to present it and in what order, that's what I have a little bit harder of a time. And so that came, uh, that clicked into place uh, recently. And then I have. So you're writing a show about it or you're writing a book? Uh, both. But because, um, yeah, I'm hoping that by the time my special comes out, the book will be clear close enough to done uh, i plan to do stand-up science again when once the special comes out and kind of uh set aside the psychedelic stuff um for uh for a bit um and and then i have i have this during covid before i started i, I put a pin in this when i started my show mind under matter because that was a huge undertaking but i was writing a book about sloths it was like kind of a vibe of like a, it's a fictional book kind of like animal farm um but uh instead of like kind of being commentary on on uh 
politics and and um uh, you know Stalin and that sort of it's it's uh it's it's commentary on on uh, consciousness and spirituality and superstition and the things that why why the mind comes up with like grand stories through that through the eyes of sloths and um, and so I started playing around with that again recently. And I have this psychedelic book that I'm just like not terribly interested in, but I know I, I know it'll sell. Those things just don't motivate me that, that much. And you're like, this like, will be successful. I uh, yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. put that aside and work yeah, on this other yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have enough eggs in the psychedelic basket. I have a, I have a company um, called My Purple Lady. We have uh, legal psychoactives that uh, that we're having to that I'm, I'm now able to start selling at shows and stuff, and we'll have an online and store what is it? What, is that, what does that do? It's just like, it's, what do you mean by legal? It's, like, it's legal psychedelics? Psychoactives, so things like Amanita muscaria and Blue Lotus, these like underground... Um, I know nothing about these. Yeah, exactly. They, they're, they're like, they're substances with, uh, that, that, with a history of cultural use in other parts of the world that people just aren't really aware of and so they just haven't been they never got scheduled so they're just not they're not illegal (laughs) because they just never put it in the books and it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game a little bit like there's like the spice was for a few years yeah 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 is it as dangerous as sort of spice was or is it no no it's it's pretty nuanced it's it's a lot of a lot of the decisions are like, okay, do we make this so that someone can have like one and not feel like anything at all, basically? So it can be like microdosing, and then that they have like three to like actually feel something. Yeah, so it's it's definitely more of like a mood altering um, experience. It's more on the I would say it's it's more the intensity of something like um, coffee. Um, I I would say. Like, okay. I fucking love coffee. I love coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I drink a couple cups of coffee every day. Me too. So you know? yeah, that's the idea. The other there's there's. So, By the way, this isn't a great sales pitch. You got somebody on that. You got somebody do, working on that sales pitch. Uh, what's that? Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I have I have sales pitches. <laughs> I, I, it's well, honestly, it's just um, I'm not interested in providing a psychic. I, I want to be positioned to provide. So we've. We've explored the idea. Basically, when I did my first tour, people would be like, are there going to be drugs at this show? Or blah, blah, blah. And then people thought like they should come tripping and they dose too much. And, I, and I, I've gone through a lot of links to try to like, you know, send people ticket holders an email like before the show, like, hey, just so you know, like the show is like meant to be a trip of sorts in and of itself. I actually don't recommend tripping. Like, oh, I would assume wh- a lot of people would show up. Tri- but why would you go to a show when you're tripping? Is that well, you shouldn't wanted? go to see any stand-up comedy on any subject, I think, when you're tripping balls. I oh. mean, a, a light enough dose, sure, and have some laughs. But like, if I'm, if I'm eating like a heavy dose of mushrooms, like I want to be laying on a couch, you know, around nature, around nature or watching nature, watching like some David Attenborough or something like that. And maybe listening to some music going on a hike, um, or on the floor, like uh, crying and laughing and, you know, like losing myself in the experience. That's going going to something that i need to pay attention to it's how not, are know. audience members when they're when they're tripping like that's uh, when you're on stage and you obviously there's a certain percentage that are tripping right? yeah and are I, they similar uh, as to drunks and that you can categorize them or are they all over the place it's and- harder to tell unless unless it's unless it's a problem and so like part of it was originally i was like what well, what if pe- what if everyone could have the exact same experience and people could dose like before the show, so I started trying to figure that out. Did you create a mass consciousness a of, in the room. A, b- a bunch of can you do that? People, uh, no. It's like I, hypnosis, I mean, can right? you? I mean, it's what you're trying to accomplish with alcohol. Like, on average, people are maybe like a little looser, a little like uh, a little more open to laughing at something that they might otherwise like 
find offensive or vulgar or something like that or or you know blowing off steam a little bit and then you and then you run into problems of having to babysit too much or someone getting too obnoxious or something like that so you know you can like on average provide but but no there there's not i mean if you and i ate mushrooms or smoked dmt right now like we'd be having a similar experience maybe but also wildly different in in okay. other ways and so so it, yeah it it came out of exploring that idea and then it turns and then and then i you know i found i found a few substances i was like you know i want something more nuanced there is some stuff there's like some like gray area stuff too that like a lot of other people are exploring that like me putting myself out there i just like can't put myself at risk of doing any kind of like gray area anything and right. so so you know i was like you're at a walmart parking lot i want like something area, yeah right? i can do it for myself it, i right. can't stand on a stage and <laughs> right be, Right. You know, it's pretty easy to get psilocybin mushrooms online these days and someone will mail it to you and probably you're going to be just fine and probably that company is going to be just fine as well. But that's because they don't like go on stage from town to town and like yeah. make a fuss about it. Um, and so I can't do something like that anyway, but they, they, yeah, the, the stuff that I do. So do you get, do you get approached by sponsors that are like, Hey, can you, can you push, can you, can we advertise at your show for people to go to our site and get this stuff or? Yeah. I mean, I, I, do they come find you or do you, would you in theory? I mean, there's like them? endless like head shops and stuff like that are always like reaching out to me to promote their business and time. And like once in a while I do some cross promotional partnerships and and things like that but um yeah it was like one i kind of wanted to understand how the business was too and uh, and it started small with just like white labeling some things you know like okay here's this per it, I, I like what they have going on i'll just slap my brand on you know get a deal arrange a deal with them and wholesale and right, you know right. do that and then, uh, and then there was enough problems with that that I was like, I want more control over it. I want to make my own thing. I want to be able to tweak mixtures and and stuff. And I got more involved in that process. And and uh, and then and then and it's supposed to fully launch in October, but uh, turns out like starting your own drug company. Such a pain in the ass. <laughs> it, it really, it, it's like not. It, you know what they don't show in Breaking Bad is like the emails you have to respond right. to and right. like the fucking Seems calendar really weird. Like I'm starting a drug company and, and it's like emails, and like <laughs> yeah, PowerPoint yeah. presentation. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. It, Zoom it, meetings. It, 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 it's the <laughs> the majority of what I do, you know. And you get to have some laughs around the way, and people like it, and you know, um, you should wrap your van. In a like in the ad in like stuff that advertises your product. I'm sure it's you it's not lost on me. Yeah, I used yeah. to think that about the motorhome. We're like, we'll get it. We'll get somebody to wrap it and pay us to drive it around the country like a billboard. Yeah, oh yeah. My God, we just ended up with the this. You know, it's a it's a pretty big chunk of money. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Um, so you found something you believe in, and you found people to make it the way you want it made, and now it's. And I get to like, cause so I, I mean, I I'm definitely I have uh, so like the couple things that I that I have are a little more um, tried and true, but I like I also like meet enough people. I'm like very and in, in, I'm in, I'm in, involved in the world enough that I'm definitely very like I have my finger on the pulse of like any new um discoveries uh being being made out there and sometimes i try one and i'm like ah oh, this is interesting yeah i'm gonna i can't wait to introduce some people to this so yeah it's it's gonna be an interesting year for me <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's That's just pretty cool man i mean you really you do a lot going on <laughs> you really do have like a lot of like and that's a, that's a whole different team you have a whole different like all these little like you have like all these different like almost like little lifetimes that you've had within just from when I've known you, oh, you know, yeah. through the years, you know? I think oh, was, that's, that's every, everyone that knows me, I'll visit them. Like, you know, friends that I stay with in LA 
And they're like, every time you show up here, like, what person are we going to get this? Yeah. Or that's just, that's the way that I I've feel like I'm starting to see more of the same person recently, like the last few times. Yeah, yeah. Where before it was like, well, you were, you this were, has when been I met a you doing stand up comedy, and then, I, then I'm, then I see you in Cincinnati here, there, and then. At an airport, you and April Macy out of nowhere. I, I just I run yeah. into you guys. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, all yeah. these different l- sort of lives and like shows. Like you're talking about, like you're you're just developing this yeah. show. As far as I'm concerned, and you're in your head, you're already putting it on the back burner to work on this other thing. And like, well, this uh, this one has me. I'm like so locked in because even though we improvise, it's still like. The show is, especially if we start having like a few tech issues where like, say there's like a little bit of latency with the internet, meaning like it's going to be a few extra seconds from the, the time he sends awful. something to, uh, to, so then I have to like really like stick to the script so that he can start predict. We have moments in the show that like he can test and see if there's like latency issues happening um so that we can like make adjustments of like what's how things are being sent and everything and it's seamless so people don't know but then i'll have to like adjust my material to be like all right i'm gonna have to stick to the script so that he can so i can launch into like a big like 20 minute long thing that he knows like every line of um and can predict you know the you know 10 seconds ahead of time what I'm going to be. That's sort of what I meant. Like, are there chunks when you just lock in and it's like, you both know this is. There can be. Right. Yeah. And so like, as like, that's like, if things, if, if, if we're starting to experience some issues, I can, I can go into that. But, but then, but I do feel like if there's like a very large chunk of new material that I want to work on, it's one thing to go off on a riff and go off on a tangent. But if I have like a new, um like big premise that i really want to dig into i kind of like have to get on the phone with them ahead of time and be like you know i might be talking about this for like five minutes so heads up like maybe maybe we could put in some stuff like this and we'll brainstorm it a little bit right which is also a fun process but it's like if i have time if he's reachable if you know and so i'm like i'm a little more locked into like a set bit of material than I'm than I'm used to being with the regular show, even though it is like, um, you know, cool that it's loose and fluid in its own way. But, but yeah, I mean, also I have I have more issues with the psychedelic community than I have with like say the science um, community. What do you mean and by so, issues? Well, there's just like a lot of uh, like the whole like wellness um industry generally speaking is oh, yeah. pretty fraudulent and so there's a lot of that within like by wellness you mean the, 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 the treatment center side of it or or just like or the wellness, wellness like generally even or, unrelated to you know it's, we're recording this january 1st everyone signed up for this and that membership and, and they're having supplements sent to their house and okay. just got a bunch of vitamins and stuff that aren't going to do anything for them and snake oil uh, yeah a whole bunch of there's a bunch of snake oil out there there's there's extreme amounts of snake oil in the in the psychedelic space an opportunity for it and um and and where it's like and then there's just like a lot of like i don't know you know someone that's writing a book about cognitive biases i i I, my my tolerance for listening to someone's astrological signs and whatever fucking horseshit that they want to tell me about after a show like sometimes i'm just like not in the mood for it how do you what do you fit what do you feel about like People like, like a Krishnamurti or a, or a, um, the the people that like transcendental meditation teachers or like some of the uh, maybe a Buddhist monk, and what do you how do you wh- about their sort of like their exploration of consciousness or like a or like a guy like a Michael Singer or a or a do- or a or a guy that whoever wrote the the power of now guy and those like those guys yeah that sort of are addressing consciousness sort of from a spiritual side yeah is that dis, is that kooky shit to you and you and there's more i wouldn't call it side? kooky it, it, it to me to me like I'll, I'll just make this about psychedelics there is 
there are a lot of reasons to use psychedelics and there are a lot of things to get out of them. There's like, uh, there, there's now like, um, these kind of motivationally speakery types in the, in the psychedelic space, these like optimizers that are much about like microdosing and doing this and that and having this like insane kind of regimented, just like very type A people that are like, here's how you get muscles and are, and get money and be successful in life. And they've integrated psychedelics in, into this, this world. And then don't, well, don't psychedelics sort of, if, if a, in a way, don't they sort of teach sort of not teach, but show you the separation away from sort of that sort of capitalism and the sort of you would think it? so but it, has, it turns out that the that not necessarily so so really? for some people you know it's maybe giving them a new point of view opening their minds for others it's validating shit that they've already uh, that they already believed but now they had some vision that like confirmed you know whatever cognitive biases that they were already experiencing. I really like the term non-specific amplifier, which is that psychedelics are, are just amplifying. Um, whatever you already, uh, whatever your biases already yeah, are. Yeah, whatever your biases already are. So, so, you know, like the, it might seem really crazy to like see someone talking to a tree or something like that on, on psychedelics or hugging a tree and like, wow, that's delusion. They're, they're experiencing a hallucination. Well, this is also called pareidolia, which is something we experience every day, which is that just things, like often things look like faces, you know, cars will look like faces, clouds, clouds will, like will have shapes and uh, stuff. Okay. And, and so, so it just magnifies. It's, it's almost just like magnifying what's already in us. And we're just kind of so used to living in it every day that like we're, we're, we're used to navigating our, our version of the, this biased perception. And so it only becomes peculiar to us once you like then amplify uh, those funny that that, regulatory. Going back to meditation, I was like, I was, when I was doing it a couple of days ago, sometimes I'll, I'll sit in the s silence and then the sounds come from the silence, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. And it, I, I noticed I was hearing stuff out of this ear and some kind of out of here, and I'd hear pieces of conversation and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a time when I did acid when I was younger, and I felt like, oh, my God, I can hear conversation like in a car driving by and it it all seemed so precise and m heightened senses that i wasn't used to and then i realized the other day like oh this is sort of a version of a lighter version of that yeah and this is something I, that's happening regularly that i just maybe wasn't ever locked into until i tried that and then it was like oh it's so that when i did it again it reminded me of that like a lesser version yeah and I'll, that's so it's like what you're saying it's already there it's just about yeah. where you focus your consciousness and your attention yeah it's a, i mean i had i had uh um since since we mentioned uh nitrous i'll just like i i had a i had a, this bizarre experience on nitrous it, it happened a, a couple times i don't do nitrous that often it's just since we're on the subject um, but I had this experience a couple times where it was like, uh, I was by myself, um, doing it and then, and having this experience where, um, cause it's a disassociative, I kind of disassociate and I, and I was talking to someone who was next to me, like a friend or something like that. And then like, I snap out of it and they're not there. It's an empty seat. Now this is like what a scary thing to hallucinate. This is like, you know, signs of something going, you know, schizophrenia or something like that. But also think about when you're driving home from this podcast and maybe you remember something that you would have liked to, uh, or I, I remember some, a point that I would have liked to have made about spirituality, meditation or whatever. Yeah. And now I'm imagining you in the passenger seat and I'm like having internally that having yeah. that, having that conversation. We all have this, you know. I, I, I love. The, I like the ones where my favorite ones, my favorite like mental representation. Convert. I like to like you know. I pick like you know maybe some extended family member that I don't see eye to eye with politically. Like 
like I like to make a nice straw man out of out of them. Sit right next. I I like to give them a real talking to. I like to. Oh man, I, you know, I like to you never sit down and practice your listening. Their, right? uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just making these genius points, and then and then they're just saying the dumbest things back. I like that. I'm imagining like the do do do, just the dumbest ideas of their arguments again, and I'm just like crushing them in the, in this yeah in this. Different that's fucking delusional that's absolutely delusional and we all do it all yeah all it's time. also a little bit of comedy writing like you do that straw man where you put that person there you have their, their argument with I would, oh, do that, yeah. I would do that with my brother-in-law like he'd frustrate me so much and then i'd be like i'd replay his his point of view so that i could yeah like, yeah mock well, them comedians get to do the yeah. get to do the costanza thing we we get to we get to uh, well they uh, went to the jerk store and they're out of you, you know, yeah, like com yeah. uh, comedians, yes. comedians get I to do Don't that. I know you from the cover of Dumbass Magazine? <laughs> <laughs> like you're their, you made their cover third time this week. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Year. So this, uh, we actually get to like go on stage and, and get to have that perfectly refined thing that then, that then people have that halo uh, effect another bias that may be in which is and and the idea that uh, it's like the genius fallacy or whatever people people get to see us on stage and they don't they don't see all of the times that our jokes fail Before they just like assume that. you know that someone doesn't know that like if I write something down there is there is a one in ten chance that I'll like maybe try that on stage there's a one in ten chance that one of those things i'll try again uh and, and like maybe work on a little bit there's a one in ten chance that that becomes a regular part of my act and then, right. then there's a one in ten chance that that makes it into a special now there's like a I write something down today. I have a joke idea. There, uh, there's uh, uh, when when I go to re record a special, you are you are seeing nothing but jokes that that there was they were one out of ten thousand jokes, and I'm presenting it in a way in which it seems like I'm like almost coming up with it off the top of my head. Like, oh my god, what's this guy just rattle off genius zingers all right. day, yes, every day, yes. always? It's like this impossible kind of um, I've been explaining that to the crowd, like through like how when people say, think about our girlfriends or people in our lives, like how crazy is, is it? That must be fun. You're on a comic. Is he funny all the time? And it's like, I, that's a problem yeah, like, in yeah. my relationship. It's not that I'm not funny. I'm funny, but all the time, yeah, it's yeah. funny when I say she's like, hey, can you run to the store? and buy me olive oil and i'm like you got some right there and she's like well that's virgin and i'm like well can i just put my dick in that bottle that's hilarious right? <laughs> yeah. but not uh, not seven times a day every day for 23 years it's old as you know yeah, yeah it's not yeah. funny you yeah, know yeah. so like you say let's it takes a lot of bad to like you feel i feel a whole notebook and i'm happy if there's if, if by the end of that i have 10 jokes that work oh uh, yeah i'm happy yeah yeah absolutely uh, you know? It's part of the art form. It's weird. It's interesting to me, though, that you say that. Like, like what we normally do with replaying memories from our past or projecting how a how a conversation is going to go in the future. Blah, blah, blah. Like we do that all the time, anyway. That's what. Hey, you see someone on the street, and you're that, like, "Well, they're talking to someone that isn't there." It's yeah, like, yeah, that's every day. That's of what my we're doing in our heads all the time. Always. They're just doing it out loud. Yeah, and, and so and that's part of what I what I've been working on is trying to be in the now and sort of get rid of put let go of both those things. Yeah. Like when they're coming in, I'm like, all right, that's not real. That's not, that's, that's, that's suffering. You know, I, I'm trying to stay away from those things. Yeah. And you're taking the next level and literally putting the person down next to you. Yeah. 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 Like, and, and so th I guess this would be my issue with, with, uh, with, with some aspects of a spiritual take is, is that spirituality was just science before it was it was just like a best approximation for our there's a lot of reasons why a social 
uh, ape would evolve these grand story, grand grand stories help remember things, which is why we have nursery rhymes and and things like that uh, for for children. And there's a right. moral to the story and Goldilocks and the three bears, whatever the fuck we were supposed to learn from that. And uh, something about breaking into homes, porridge. but there is it was porridge. Always get the right temperature porridge. That was the moral of the story, yeah. and yeah. Um, <laughs> and then um, there's uh, and it, you know so so there there's there's all these evolved re- and we know that because we've us apes are these fantastic tool makers that can uh, that also have these cultural transmissions and language and 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 ways of passing on information. Um, through generations in the way that other species uh, can't, and so, um, so you know, there there were there were a lot of reasons to evolve um, kind of a believing brain or to have, say, voices in our heads um, and and that sort of. Thing. So, but to me, I, I guess, it, I, I think I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not attempt to have like some level of Bayesian processing where we go like, okay, we now understand that earth, that the sun doesn't evolve around the earth and the world doesn't actually revolve around me. And that the, like, it's worth noting that I am not the, this conscious experience, there's no escaping it. You're all, every single person on earth is going to find themselves at the center of their own you know, subjective perception of reality, like it would only because not not because what's happening in like some small street in China right now isn't more important or anything else. It's just I simply don't have access to that information, and my brain's making the best use of the information that it currently has to you know navigate the uh, social experience that I'm having so more people will follow me or whatever else and and so like we're, we're always going to find ourselves at the center but I, I think knowing that we aren't at the center is some is valuable information if you want to like say make satellites or something like that like uh e- elon musk who you're going to uh read about and so uh, in that same way i think that when i read um, you know, quotes from classic philosophers, I, I often think like, I wonder what they would say to that if they had Dar- access to Darwin, uh, you know, if Darwinian thinking had been a thing. If you, if you could understand, oh, my brain evolved this thing to make me imagine other beings and then I, I sometimes overly project a a mind onto other things because uh, because there's a there's a higher cost involved to uh, uh, you know, understanding that pr- uh, say a predator or prey has a mind is so valuable um, that and and there, there's a huge cost involved to missing that say a lion doesn't have a brain and, and, and motives and intentions of its own. Whereas if you over perceive a mind in something and find yourself talking to a tree. Uh, is there that or even uh, a bear like you're like oh bear it looks so cute <laughs> you, know? you know what i mean and then it attacks you like just because you and your consciousness of perceive it as like i'm going to communicate with this thing yeah 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 exactly and so but but usually there was if you're going to err toward one side or the other you would want to err toward over perceiving a brain or at least that's how, what evolution has selected our brains to do and quite testably and so we we know that now. And so like to not incorporate that knowledge into um, into like some of say meditation or, or other spiritual practices, um, I think that is where people get into like a little bit of bypassing and, and denial. Like when, when people are like, don't tell me how the magic trick works that it, it, it ruins it for me. I'm like, well, I get that. But also like knowing how things you could work, have the experience. Also, like yeah. I get to like that doesn't like me getting to learn like it, like I, I'm sorry that your view of magic is dependent on like imagining that like 
a fictional thing <laughs> exists. It, it, to me, it's very magical and amazing and wonderful that someone has the coordination and spent the 10,000 hours figuring out how to make a ring that they just placed on their on their different finger when you aren't looking like look like it's disappearing and reappearing really quickly in this like really smooth and impressive way like yeah. that's very beautiful and amazing to me and 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 when when some people are like no i can't no, it will it will ruin everything like i i i don't know i i just I've never, I've never felt that way. Not, not that I want to like skip to the end of the movie and not experience the journey or something like that. But, but at the, uh, by, by the end of the movie, I still need to settle back into like, that was a movie and that was, and that was fiction, you know? And, yeah. and so I, I don't know. That's, that's a little my take on spirituality, but also plenty of studies suggest that we need a sense of spirituality and mysticism and to have a sense of hope and wellness and get you out of bed and face the unfathomable number of impossible, <laughs> chaotic, uh, unpredictable um, challenges in, in life. So I don't know. I like Andy Puttycomb of Headspace. I don't uh, even know what that is. Headspace is a meditation app. He was a he was a he was a Buddhist, and and then he was like, you know, it, he actually like the monastery was like a hair abusive, or he thought that it was, and like he like physically had to escape after like you know decades of committing himself to this, and then you know was like at a bar and was like. Yeah. I want to I want to explain meditation to like the people sitting in this bar right now and so like what happens if you just strip away all of the spirituality and I think that if you put his guided meditations up against these spiritual like I think they'd be saying pretty darn close to a lot of the yeah, same I, thing I and just I, you know yeah. Sam Harris uh was one of the four horsemen of atheism and now has one of the top meditation apps um in in the world and yeah I, I i'm all for atheism that rejects to me to, to be honest that rejects religion mm -hmm. for the most part um i feel like atheism that ex, that accepts the there's nothing and i i know that is denying science because well, science is about not knowing and uh, taking yourself to a place where for sure this reality that we've created obviously is a fiction. Yeah, yeah. So to cut through that and to get to a place where you're quieting your mind and, oh, and yeah. connecting to whatever that science is. Yeah. That is the the even if it's the quantum what what all that you know all beyond me. Yeah, yeah. But it's like to me, if I can shut out my own mind and shut out all the shit that's come in, that's that's not religion. Yeah, yeah. That's that's science. Yeah. Some of these guys that I'm reading, like that wrote in the 1900s, have a connection to like what our DNA is doing that they shouldn't have had. You know what I'm saying? Because through through meditation and sort of their own learning and paying attention to things and their own thinking on these subjects and philosophies, they've they came to some of the same answers that science has then come to, you know, mm -hmm. I, that's my understanding of it, you know? Yeah. But I don't I know mean, what Sam Harris is doing. I, I think either. of him as like, like you're, I, to hear that is pretty interesting to me because yeah, that's, I, I don't really follow, but I, I know people that are, he's got a, he's fans. got a top meditation podcast. That's interesting mm -hmm. because yeah. that's, that to me seems to be embracing and, and a it, spirituality as opposed to, and his wife, is somewhat spiritual and like writes a lot about consciousness and stuff and more like I'm really interested in that stuff too. So I'm really interested in we. what your book would be and if you if going into the space with a guy like Kahneman and or or Dan Airely or these people that write about the consciousness and the brain like Will there be a space for you in that as an author, or will you be? Would there be skepticism because you're not, 
you don't have a doctorate or you don't have these things that I mean, that's just have. like uh, the stuff that I'm used to. Like, I, you know, I'm a comedian, so I'm not taken seriously. But then uh, from a, if you're a com- comedy fan, science is too boring for you, uh, you know. So, you know, if it's, uh, that's all. Like, who cares? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm just writing the thing that it, it, I'm writing the book. People are like, what's your what's your favorite? You know, when when a stranger asks me, what's your like, I'm on a plane. Someone asked me what I do. I don't tell them I'm a comedian because that could make this flight. But you're miserable. like when you say I study consciousness. So I, like, I oh, say okay. I have a I have a science podcast and it usually shuts people the fuck up and just like <laughs> they might go back to minding their own business. Yeah. And when pressed on what my favorite subjects are, I usually say cognitive biases, and that, and that's be like. Really, evolution's way up there, but evolution can be um, alienating, and and it's just like a whole thing to explain. Cognitive biases, you can rattle off something. Do that, you, you that, know, to write you, this? To write this, would, are you just through your own research of reading a bunch of other people's books, or do you have your own ideas that you've sort of developed through your own thinking and thought processes and experiments, or how? Like, what's the what's the core that puts that book together? Is it? Uh, I'm well. I'm just starting with the stuff that's in my head that is from reading books from like Dan Ariely and Kahneman and taking a zillion different online courses and and things like that. And, and yours then, is sort of breaking it then, down. Like in your voice, what have I discovered about this science, and what's like yeah. my thing for dumb, my cognitive thought for dummies? By, and by, then by. I got to get on stage and explain it in my way, in my voice, and and when people ask me in person, I, I figure out like, well, how would I articulate? Uh, I just remember some of the, that stuff like, you did about your brain was I, some of my favorite stuff I've seen in years. Yeah, and a lot of I mean, a lot like of your these brain people, being against you, like that's such a weird. Uh, I, yeah, that's yeah. such good comedy, man. Like oh, you thanks. break, you take an issue that we all have. And you say it in a different way and you in a funny way that makes me go, oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a truth that I need to pay attention to. Like that, I love that kind of, I just, I don't know why it's flashing into my head. I don't even know the bit, but it's like, I remember you, it's a bit where you explain you're fighting your own mind. Oh right? yeah. It's, it's just about how, how hard it is to read neuroscience. And you'd think that the brain would be more interested in learning about itself. Yes. And how frustrating that is. It's, and but that's not what the brain's for. But yeah, that's the that's the joke that I set aside my knowledge of why the brain's like that to uh, for the. Jo- but yeah, it, it is. I love hilarious. that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, like, and just in you know, there's I didn't discover um, uh, the term straw man, you know, but that was that was a fun little back and forth. That, you know, so t- taking something like that and articulating it in a way that I. Uh, normally would in these in these conversations just to like get out like it's just a lot of you know it's just meeting my girlfriend's family and stuff and 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 just like the conversations that bubble up and I go like you know if I had more time (laughs) to, to like share what my point of view is to like explain some of the like here's what I would say um and so that's that's like the book that i you know, oh, okay someone, yeah okay that that's someone yeah. you know someone's like oh what, what what's this and that about like um you know my girlfriend was like you know shane knows a bunch about like mating behavior or whatever and and um he did, like and he then, did a he did a whole thing i remember what I, I specifically keep coming back to cincinnati at brouhaha yeah talking to you about you were sort of had your notes and you're like i'm working on this thing right now or i'm yeah, yeah. I'm doing a. a, a, a the, I made a Netflix the, special about it. Yes, yeah. this that special ended up becoming that. Like that's. Yeah, yeah, and so and so then I was and so then I just like listened to them because they're I'm I'm a quiet person in real life and I just prefer to, but my my girlfriend's always like, hey, talk about your intro or whatever, and so so then they go off talking about like. Hey, why do men and women do this thing? And is it DNA or is it culture or whatever? And you know, I'm just sitting and listening, and then and then you know, finally, I forgot all about uh, that, man. Sh- my girlfriend's like, so what's the science of that? And I'd be like, well, uh, you know, there's what you're trying to articulate is something called like the minimal parental investment theory, which makes this and that prediction. And so, y- whenever that comes up in conversation, I'm just like, 
Yeah, I just got to write that down just to explain. I'm just, I, I find myself explaining this, this same idea over and over again, and I've noticed that people enjoy hearing about it, and so I'll just I have, that's write that down. Interesting. I'm, now I'm thinking again about TikTok, and like people like, like right now, there's a lot of stuff of people explaining relationships and explaining, mm -hmm. like Pearl has her things, and like, like these like clips that, that are popping up that are the, the relationship sort of experts. Mm -hmm. Do you find that they're they're hitting on a lot of the psychology and the subjects that you were talking about eight years ago when you developed that show 10 years ago and now, or are they all just wrong again? And they're just putting out some more, some stuff that maybe now you could go back and sort of almost be the voice of correction of like funny science going back to these people. Like everybody right now maybe. is sort of wrapped up in narcissism. Um, and in, uh, and in, uh, I'm not on TikTok, so Right. I but know. I'm just like, like, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of uh, what's the, the 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 types of the types of people like the dismissive avoidance and the blah 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 and these people like oh, these yeah. relationships that are attracted to one another and this yeah, is why they're not yeah, working yeah. and this is how you deal with the so you like I can that, see you already being like yeah. that stuff is yeah yeah but the, this is what people are right now are are absorbing yeah and is that all sort yeah, of disproved that, science yeah that, th those um uh what what are uh, what, 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 what are, world, what are they uh, the attachment um attachment, attachment theories. theories yeah yeah those those haven't been replicating well uh, there there's you know that that's a that's always a work in progress you know there's like the myers briggs stuff which i think still p employers uh give to people to like determine your personality and that's something that science hasn't used in i don't know 40 years or something like that they'll, with personality research they'll use usually like this big five personality indicator of, of conscientiousness agreeableness uh uh, neuroticism, extroversion, and openness, and sometimes they'll put in like a intelligence um, too. But and 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 that's and that's like more of an umbrella for diving into. They they put that together by testing out what's every single adjective that you could use to describe a person, and then eventually they'd be like, you know, test someone how how they would rate on cleanliness, and then seems like they would kind of people that rated high on cleanliness also seem to rate really high on organization uh, and so this kind of falls under this conscientious um umbrella and oh it turns out those people also tend to be a little more punctual uh than uh, other people so so that's how that's how they kind of came up with that's how you kind of test something like that out the attachment styles to, i i don't I'm having trouble recalling a methodology. I, I think I've read a couple of those books. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had some girlfriends along the years that were pretty amped on that stuff. And this explains everything. And it, right. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I feel know. like you're science. I just, just, it's just occurring to me that I feel, I know we got to wrap this up, but I feel like you were like that science that you were writing about and looking into Eight ten years ago, uh, maybe not even that long. Attachment ago. theory stuff. Ah, yeah, no, I, I I do I do have a I do have a real sense that like people are getting keen to like evolutionary biology type stuff. There's certainly but you've already set that shit aside, and yeah, now it's like, like and now the world needs me. the experts <laughs> like you about that that can yeah, come in and maybe. be like, all right, this is this guy is full of shit. This is what they're what they're teaching young men like. You're a you're a voice of sort of expertise that I didn't even. It's just maybe the world does need they me. They do after need you. All. I tell hey, you. Hey, what? Back up off that bridge, Shane. Uh, did you did you introduce <laughs> red flags? Did you in your special? What's that? Red flags in your special. Was that a thing from you that's now per permeating society? Uh, no, okay. no, no. I want to go back and watch that special and see how it fits into today's it, narrative. It's it's funny because I made that I made that so hyper accessible for people that it was that was that was the lesson that I learned from that special was to like not just not compromise when you were like how are you gonna make this book. Are you worried about like whatever judgment or whatever? What I learned from that special is like the age old wisdom of just like be yourself or whatever. Because I, 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 it was also just there, there's a big difference between what works in a comedy club and what works on TV. And what works on TV generally tends to be a hair more cerebral often 
than what will work in a comedy club because in a comedy club there's a lot of group think and whatnot on tv or when someone's listening to your album in their car they don't need to worry about like what someone else thinks about that joke oh. or what like the temperature of of the room sensibilities wise is right. b before determining if they if they should laugh or like when i go to movies it's always like i'll find something hilarious that like the audience doesn't get or like or something like that and then and then people will be like laughing preposterously hard at something that i'm like i think is kind of a weak Right. easy um yes. joke and uh and so it's just a changed experience when you're when you're taking that in um by yourself and and i kind of knew that um and forgot it um when i made that special so that just that just made me that much more committed to adjusting right? my strategy to find the thing that i want to talk about and make and then figure out how to market it appropriately to the right audience so that like you know if someone doesn't give a shit about cognitive biases but they love like fictional books like animal farm perhaps they'll like my sloth book whenever the hell that gets right. done which is probably a ways off um if people don't give a shit about that but want to learn about i think the sloth you know. book should take a long time yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really should. <laughs> you shouldn't I'll be able to knock that one out quickly. Slow. It should be a slow uh, read. All still of still just hanging you know there. I mean? <laughs> yeah, very good. Their default state is hanging. D their what? Their default state is hanging. They're, the way that their bones are constructed, hmm. it's just hanging. They're not. They're not using any energy whatsoever. When they die, they'll stay hanging up there. That's just how their bones are. Wow. <laughs> so not, they're not like using muscle to hang. They're just hanging. Dangle. Do bats do the same thing when they hang up upside when they hang? I don't know. I mean, they're sleeping like that. Probably they're pretty darn light. Probably doesn't take a lot of energy to get okay. a good grip going. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about bat feet muscles. <laughs> I'll, have to, <laughs> I'll have to look. There into has it. to be a correlation. Sloths can't be the only thing that hang. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I didn't say that they were. <laughs> I I have I have, I have I have I yeah I have no idea. I just know that their 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 um their legs or arms or whatever limbs. I think that analysis about comedy and the 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 context of watching it or listening to it it's that's never occurred to me, but it seems so obvious now. But. Yeah, okay. Beca That's because part of the bat reason they uh, their knees face backwards when they relax, special tendons lock the toes and talons in place so they do not exert energy while hanging. So Hell kind of yeah, bats. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, It'd be weird to just be holding on for yeah. dear life the all time. of the time. Yeah, it's, <laughs> all, can, can all of no the matter time what your weight is, to sleep. it's pr in proportion. It's still a lot for your little legs. <laughs> yeah. you know? But that is so interesting to me because I've always thought of stand up. Like I wanted, I would want to capture. I've always thought like the idea is to cap, to kill for the room, yeah. and that, and just to capture that thing that's happening in the room. And once you capture that, that's what you've cap, and that's exactly wrong. I had yeah, I, that didn't I, even I, I occur to, to have, me. I have this joke on my first album. It would bomb every time that I did it. I barely tried it, and I just thought it was hilarious. And com and comics would laugh in the back and stuff, and it was just like really bizarre. And I was just I I did multiple recordings, and after the first night, I knew I had everything that I wanted. So I just got drunk and started riffing a little bit for the following shows. And I just took a chance on that one joke, and it just happened. It was probably the only time that it's ever done well um, in front of an audience. And it just happened to, and I captured that. And then I was listening to the album, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this joke in the special, actually. And uh, and then it was like one of the jokes that like. Eh, Work critics and stuff like that would be like if you just listen to one el uh, thing on the album listen to this and yeah it was uh one of the best jokes on the album yeah that's yeah i like 
I, I like that perspective on it, that they're different things. Cause I hadn't really, I, obviously that's, that is Context. true, but you haven't, I would think it'd be more towards air towards capturing the moment of the killing in front of the crowd, but you're right. It's not, it's about figuring out the medium that you're on and what works best for that one. And, I would have never thought of the psychology of watching it by myself. Yeah, because you got you really got to watch it on the road because the road will make you water things down uh, too much. So you can do that. To You want to get paid. You want to get hired back. You want the audience to have a nice time. But you got to be aware that like, eh, there's like a level up on this joke or this aspect of the performance that, you know, and in front of the right crowd or whatever, or smarter crowd, more attentive or whatever it might be. Huh. Make sure that you keep those uh, in the back of your mind as the ones that should be on an album. So how important is the joke writing to you in your shows now as opposed to the idea writing? Uh, it used to be really important. Um, now... I don't know. I feel like I I often don't have that much time to write stand up anymore. So a lot of times I am just kind of like in the car constructing a joke and thinking about it, running it by my VJ or whatever. And then that's that's why I need to start doing regular stand up again to try out some like other material that I and I, and I can tell I can tell that like um that I spend a lot of time doing like heady material because sometimes like I just, I, the thing that I'll get excited about is some joke about my balls or something, <laughs> right. something like that. Cause I just need to, those are the like, ones you don't have to write. You don't I, have to I know. Write. Like, they just, just they, like they, that. There's always going to be that aspect of me that needs to be expressed in some way. I was actually going to years ago. I might still, I was going to do a double album and one was all of my like headiest science jokes. And then the other one was nothing but butthole jokes. Nothing but a whole joke. Okay. I, and I have, if you do a tract of Bridgem, that's about that's the, the science of buttholes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who studies those? Who studies the buttholes? Is that a, is that a proctologist? Is a proctologist? Yeah, yeah. yeah. study it, but. Who studies the ball? I thought you meant like a person that you know. What's that no, guy? No, it's the guy we know yeah, yeah. that studies buttholes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Will. Yeah, it's proctologist. Hmm. Yeah, you bridge it with some science of the butthole, and then you just get into butthole jokes. Call it the yeah. gooch. What are you feeling? Science or buttholes? All right, let's take a break. Wrap it up. All right. Sounds good. I, I'm, I'm happy you came by, man. I yeah, really I'm glad this worked there. out. There's was a short notice. Did just... you get to do any of the an the antidotes that you wanted to do? You know what I mean? Did you, save any, did you get any of the good stuff? Like, at the beginning, you were like, I mean, you know. Oh, like my... No, no, it's not... We we're talking before recording that I like I I, I like to be um, I like to not be entertaining um, when I'm not recording because it's I do the same thing before before a show like is my most boring right before a show I usually like get a little like um, I get tired and like sometimes a little sad like right before. <laughs> Right uh, for about the 30 minutes like gearing up to it often and then like so if you find yourself too happy before a show do you try to do, do something to turn that around get some oh yeah, yeah i mean i i'm <laughs> a i'm a, a, a i'm a real pro at finding any excuse for do you have to get in do you do you do you, do you specifically try to get yourself to a headspace before you go on stage no yeah okay i don't know no that. it's i mean for me getting on no i can just walk on stage and and do it uh, that's that's the that's the easiest most boring aspect of everything that i that i do i mean i was driving i was driving to that gig on you know if you see me it's i was driving to that it, the, that gig like on the phone with a few different people figuring out packaging checking with a lawyer to make sure that so I, I don't go to jail and, like and then i'm sorting this and that out i i show up i show up two and a half hours early to go through tech stuff two hours ahead of time i'm i'm doing video I wouldn't and stereotype you that way i would stereotype you as like 
you're doing whippets in the van and what? I, oh, fucking showtime. Uh, I got to get there. But no, oh, you're like no. on the phone working three businesses. You got two phones uh, you're it's, putting together a show. It's, you're on the phone with the, it's with the video madness. guy. And then you're like, you show up. You know, By the time I get on stage, it's like the, it's the only, it's usually like the only chance I've had to relax all day. Yeah. Well, that's a good, good to know that, that I, if I come see you, I'm watching like your sort of most relaxing moment. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> That's cool. Finally, like, there's nothing else I have to do right now than just be funny for 90 minutes. That's the easiest part of my day.